connected. And uh, all right, so we're ready to get started. Uh, guys, I had to step out of town briefly for last minute to check on a rental property. And so big windstorm blew that whole thing into the pool. Anyway, um, we'll have a little bit of out of office, a little new background here. And um, pretty quiet day here. We're going to unpack this. So let me put this away and we'll get started here in just a moment. All right. So let's uh, let's dive in. Any questions? I just checked. I didn't see any questions on that. And uh, let me know, by the way, if the uh, audio is uh, is good. I'm uh, working with a uh, lavalier mic here today. And uh, we're going to unpack some news. We're going to take a look at the markets and do some training on the crypto mastery indicators. And uh, so, yeah, let's get started. So just some news here just to dive in. And of course, uh, you know, Bitcoin's pushing up here higher. It was interesting. It was up earlier today and then it started selling off. So we'll have to unpack why that might be. And um, some of the news here, China. So China may have heard unleashed a, um, they're calling it a tsunami. Uh, they pushed a lot of liquidity into the markets last week. And we talked about that and uh, temporarily we saw a little bit of a sell off in crypto because they were, people were pulling money out of crypto, putting it into the Chinese markets. And the reason the Chinese are doing that is they like to prop up the uh, their, the markets so when people go home to Christmas everyone's happy and they're not going to talk badly about the uh, regime uh, at least that's what I'm hearing so uh, you, you know but this is actually good money liquidity coming into the markets is a good thing and will push prices higher so we're just kind of waiting we're waiting for this thing to break to the upside and you know I will just remind us all let's never be complacent that anything is guaranteed or given. Uh, this is crypto, but this is one of the most risk-reduced times aside from coming out of the bottom. But where we really want to be concerned and looking to take profits is as as we start hitting new highs and the next phase of the bull run starts happening. You know, I do think that's worth noting that if everyone is standing by expecting the parabolic blow off top, then that's less likely to happen. The big money, the smart money will probably step in. It is a game of musical chairs. Fortunately, our signals here are excellent at calling those tops. And we'll be waiting and watching for those market top signals. And I'll uh, share that with you once we uh, get over to the chart. So anyway, that's the story with China. Let me see if there's anything else worth unpacking here. Uh, let's see. I think that's probably all I want to get into with that. Uh, there's some talk still of digitizing the dollar and the CBDCs worldwide. That's not current news, so we won't get into it. And let's see. I might... At some point, we're going to revisit that path to 150,000 that I've done, that study that's ongoing. But I tend to like to dive back into that when there's new news relating to any of those 10 factors. If you haven't seen that yet, or you're new or watching this on YouTube, uh, make sure to like the video here and you can subscribe down below to get notified. Just turn on that bell to be notified when there are new videos. But you can find some of my prior studies over at TradingView. Just Google Brett Fogel at TradingView. Look for that study, the path to 150,000. So let's just skim through this. I have some other news I want to get to, but really want to dive into the charts. And I think that was probably what people most want to know and what to do from here. So that's about all on that. Let's see, Bitcoin RSI. This was an interesting study. I was reviewing this uh, earlier today and uh, the RSI relative strength index. Um, it, you know, uh, These people will pontificate all day long and none of them have any idea what's going to happen, um, but uh, it's good clickbait. And we never know on the study that I was just referencing. I showed paths to 150K and even 250K Bitcoin. What I did like about this article, though, was the uh, pattern here we can have a look at and uh, what which could uh, sort of play out. And I, we, you know, none of us know, but I have a pretty good idea what it's going to look like. So, Bitcoin price analysis RSI peak equals 233, not really important. Let's pull up this chart. So let's see, can I make this bigger? You guys probably can't see that. And that's not the chart I wanted to show you, actually. Let me get to another one down here. This is the one. So basically, this kind of a pattern, we're in sort of an ascending wedge, typically breaks to the upside. I had I showed my uh, five wave Elliott wave pattern last week, at least in the M3 Active Trader class. And so we are just beginning wave five, I believe. But uh, in terms inside of that, these things generally don't go straight up. When we do break to new all-time high, generally there'll be a retest of the uh, prior high. And uh, this is, it is Bitcoin. It looks like a two-week chart. That's interesting. They're doing two-week uh, to eliminate some of the noise. 
And um, but I, I don't like to do two week because as we correctly called, usually the third or the fifth breakout is the one that happens. And so on a weekly chart, we were watching that and that fifth rejection, we knew we were going to come back down. And so we're just putting a new market structure to come back above that. If we can break above, let's say 72K, we would be looking for a push higher and a retrace. Now, this is a very fairly simplistic view here. This would show a push up to 150K. I think we're going to have some trouble at 100,000. That's a big psychological round number. And there is still that 5.3 study showing how 80,000 should be uh, the top of this market according to the prior cycles. I don't think that's reasonable, but we have to remain open to that. We'll be looking for resistance and using our cell block order indicator our order block detector around 80,000 for pullbacks, 100,000 for pullbacks. Once we firmly break 100K though, I think it's a pretty fast move up to 150K. And uh, this chart showing a pullback all the way to 70, 275 to retest that high. I, I don't I don't know that's the case. Uh, we certainly have to be open to it, but that's also where our order block detector comes in handy. So we'll be watching and we'll have some nice swing trade opportunities in that range. And then they're showing how it could push up higher here. They have 250K, which is the number I've been proposing for a year now. Uh, for some reason, the article, they had 233,000. First time I've heard that exact of a number, certainly not uh, reasonable to, uh, to narrow it down that closely. But anyway, this kind of a pattern, likely what will be coming. Now this would play into the four year cycle is intact. And they're showing that if I can zero, in, it's really small here, um, but coming down in now, they're showing, I'm going to assume they're not doing that to time based because that would show it taking off to new highs in 2026. I think we've got real economic trouble on the horizon. And um, in contrast, I think the parabolic blow off top could come much sooner coming into the end of this year. I know nobody expects that, but the big moves in Bitcoin happen very quickly. And we're all hoping that that is coming up next. What I will suggest is to take some profits along the way and wait for a, a decent size pullback. I think somewhere along the way to the top, we're gonna get some kind of a nice little pullback to um, sell half positions and then buy back lower. And, uh, and then we'll be waiting for our signals to where we would believe the market top is just like we called it in 2021 and a couple of months ago now when we uh, kind of pushed up and had the bear market signals firing. I'm going to share those with you. If you're new here, you're going to want to see those. So anyway, that's kind of the game plan. Uh, there is still this possibility. We're still rejecting at a downward trending parallel channel <clears throat> and could see some further downside. Uh, some of these, some big traders have major shorts on thinking they're going to go down to 40,000. Uh, I think that's wrong. I think part of what we saw yesterday in the big move the other day, uh, was it yesterday or the day before? Big move up. I think that was partially a short squeeze. All right. So uh, they're throwing out some targets here. You, you know, there's a lot of pontification here. Nobody knows. And uh, here's another, uh, the chart here doesn't tell us anything we haven't looked at. Let's get to our own charts. That's the news on this uh, article there. I'm gonna jump over to Crypto Panic to see if anything is breaking. Um, this is a little bit premature to say what happened today. Something coming out with Ripple and a stable coin. Don't really follow Ripple, but uh, at some point that might start to take off. It's just become kind of a dead narrative like Cardano. And so what we're really gonna be looking for are the new narratives in terms of this market cycle. So uh, let's see, uh, don't pay attention to that. But uh, if you are new here, uh, you can also find out more about us at moonstream.io and down at the bottom, some of the free resources we have, like our Monday newsletter that's excellent and some sort of a big overview of the uh, crypto markets. And then there's also our paid newsletter right here, which we have a monthly coin pick. Coin picks have been doing very well. Sui was our coin pick last month. And uh, the one before that, I think it was Aptos. We'll have to pull that up. And then some of our other services like the Crypto Mastery, indicators, which we're going to dive into here in a minute. And you'll hear me talk about my active trader group, which is our Wednesday class. If you like what you see here, we go into a deeper dive into more macro charts like the DXY, like the IBIT study that I've been following and which has has filled 98% of the time roughly. And so um, there's, there's both a, a magnet toward the upside for a a gap there and to the downside. Maybe we'll get to it today. And then of course, um, our retire rich classes for longer term investors. If you've got 
larger portfolios. And we have a portfolio in there of recommended coins, uh, some of which are up 500% since last year, and uh, some are poised to go much higher. And lastly, if you do want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can find out more, book a call with me, go here, short video on this page at moonstream.io and this uh, button right there, you can find out more. All right, this class here is really to give you guys an idea of what we do, who we are, and all of that. And so looking at a one-hour, four-hour chart, um, we <clears throat> there is sell pressure up above here that um, we had pushed up into yesterday and rejected from on the one-hour chart, also having trouble here at 67K. And uh, let's see, I see some questions coming in. I'll get to that in a minute. But we do have in this order block on the four-hour chart, just think of these as these are actual orders on the order books, and they have been very effective in showing where price as well reverse or bounce out of. See how we bounce out of these green order blocks down here uh, and shot right up to the sell blocks. And so we're going to have some trouble. We already knew this up around 70K, 72K, but a big short squeeze, squeeze would wipe those out because all these shorts are waiting and hoping that the markets will go down. So we'll see if that's the case or not. So I'm going to leave that page. We'll go to the daily chart here and we'll unpack kind of what we're seeing on the macro side here. Again, we're in an upward trending parallel channel, which is kind of within what uh, could be argued a downward trending channel. I see it as a descending bullish wedge or a descending broadening wedge. So these patterns generally resolve to the upside. But again, we have this resistance. If we draw that trend line over on a daily chart, we can see we are going to have some trouble here. And then there's also a sort of a dual resistance right in this zone. So, you know, I think this is going to bounce around. It's going to churn here a bit, and then it's going to break through, retest like that chart I shared, and then likely to the upside. If we wanted to layer in our signals again, uh, I'll do that in a moment. Right now, we're just looking at a 21-day, a 50-day, and a 100, sorry, 200-day exponential moving average. I like that we're back above the 200-day exponential moving average and the 21 and 50-day, also loosely known as the bull market support band. So um, that's, uh, but I prefer a simpler version of that, the 21 and 50. And uh, again, so this area of interest, we just have to see when this can breaks up higher before we start looking for more long entries. And let me move this over so I can color code that as orange, kind of a highlight. All right, what else can we look at? Let's look at our signals here, see what they're showing. The early reversal indicator, let's key that up first. These have been pretty quiet because the markets have been just chopping sideways, but we did get a bullish ERI, these green arrows, hence the name early reversal indicator. It was an accidental discovery that we made, but has been a huge breakthrough in our trading. So um, just toggling through some of the other ones here, I want to see if uh, we've been in a, a bullish scenario for our average true range. I did get an alert this morning that we just went bullish on the weekly time frame for, was it, well, we've been bullish in the weekly time frame on Bitcoin all the way back here since around May, it looks like. So that's good to know. And we can also see in the weekly chart here, by the way, building support on the 50 or the, sorry, the 21 day, 21 week exponential moving average. Let me turn off the uh, dynamic ATR, which is one of our indicators there. Uh, I am going to turn on our radar, by the way. See, so we've got mostly green on the radar, you guys. Um, now, I'll, I'll step back a little bit. We developed the radar back in 2021, and uh, these are customizable. So you can come in if you ever want to change up the time frames. Just go to settings, and you're able to change the uh, inputs on that. So if you want to see what I do. Oops. Let's go over here, and I'm going to do that again. I've got lots of buttons on this screen, so I've got to get into the right area. Somewhere in here uh, on the style visibility, it's okay. It's giving me the wrong uh, indicator because I was clicking on, it was pulling up the order block indicator. That's why. So here, we go to inputs on the radar. You, if you're a day trader and short-term trader, you can change uh, these different time frames. So if I'm uh, day trading or doing a short-term swing trade, I'll have four charts up. I'll use a three minute, a five minute, 15 minute, and an hourly, for example. But for general trading, I like daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly. So we've got, we've turned green on the quarterly chart on Bitcoin. It's very good. Still bearish on the monthly. But as soon as that turns and we have all green, green is go, everybody. Uh, so one of the ways we use this in the 2021 markets, when markets rolled over suddenly, 
that's when I went to Joe, our programmer, partner, and uh, mad scientist genius. If you guys know Joe, he's great. Uh, created this so that you guys would know. So you would know when to get out of the markets. All red on the radar, stay out. You know, when in doubt, stay out. And all green, green is good. So we're setting up very nicely for a nice breakout on the weekly time frame uh, on that radar. The uh, candle does look bullish, holding that 21-day exponential moving average, hitting resistance though. So we're just going to have to see if we can break up above it. There's a lot of shorts up in here. We can see at the look at the total market cap, which shows that as well. I don't know, you guys. I feel a short squeeze is coming, but we just need that support down below. And we are in a new upward trending channel, which I always like to identify early. So there is that on the downside. Look, we have to look at the downside too. If we were to push down, I would say around 56K, that 50-week exponential moving average, if we were to lose up here and push back down, it wouldn't be a bad thing. Uh, it's not a good thing, not a bad thing. It's just what the markets do to give a stronger push higher as we get closer to this upper boundary. And so the uh, caveat to that is if we break above and retest, then that would be a bullish structure as well. But I do like to see those exponential moving averages just below. Uh, if all of that seems like a lot for you, you can stick with our simpler indicators like the radar. And uh, look at that, the uh, radar just toggled off on the weekly. So uh, market's selling off a little bit here because of that resistance. So that's why I'm suggesting we could certainly come back down. And if you've been with me in M3 for any length of time, these large vector candles tend to have their midpoint retested. And looks like it almost did there today. A vector candle is when the market maker moves price, allows price to move. You can see them on the charts. So back over here, this vector candle right there came back and retested the midpoint. So we see that both on the bullish side and the bearish side. So uh, it's kind of an art and a science, but you can see that came right back up and retest this midpoint if I were to draw it correctly there. And uh, so, so I would suggest we could come back down to 64.5 before pushing up higher on that. Just looking at our signals though, we see a lot of buyer support down in this range. The early reversal indicator, this is the key everybody. When that is in conjunction uh, with our other signals, and I'm gonna move something out of the way here, so it's covering my screen a bit. Um, you can see when, when these start to combine, then that's go time as well. We will pull up the uh, trade success checklist. We do have a new version of the trade success checklist, by the way, you guys. Uh, and it's going to be out soon with our new indicators. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I broke some things in there when I was adding some images. So the team is uh, and my arena are working on fixing that. So we'll have that probably by next week. And stay tuned for that. But um, if you're somewhat familiar with that, sorry, guys, I got to move this thing out of the way continually. Uh, let me make this window smaller. Let's see. I'm not trying to do that on the laptop. All right, no worries. Um, what I'm paying, calling your attention to, this green arrow, the early reversal indicator, and this, our trend strength indicator, when they are both green, and the trend strength indicator turns green out of this oversold zone and comes above 20, right there, that first green dot, that is a confirmation to go long. And then we can start adding to that position. Uh, and look at that, that radar is just on the edge on that weekly. It's going back and forth from green to red. Um, I'm going to go back to that. I'm going to come back to that because there's an important nuance. But to continue this thought, this green arrow, this turning green, now we have our signal line also going green. And this other mid, mid indicator we don't need. But I can tell because of this green vertical here that we have our key and the bell trend indicator also going green. So that's a further confirmation. Uh, so we just have to see. I think it's very strong resistance overhead. So I like to buy into strength. Uh, we do have our signals lining up here, but it's probably going to be a few more days and maybe into next week. But back to that radar comment, uh, we, we need to wait till that week closes and it's only Tuesday. So this is somewhat irrelevant on the weekly time frame. If we do push up in this range towards Sunday, the end of the week, and that turns green, and maybe if we get a green at the end of the month, that's I have to pay attention to the candle close. And uh, then, then it looks like go time, you guys, because we have that three month based on the September close being bullish. We have a bullish arrow on our radar. So we're just looking for those to go all green. Uh, we've made this as easy as possible. By the way, if you're new here and you're a more sophisticated trader, uh, there's quite a bit of quant, quant work going on but, but behind the scenes on all of these. We've made them visually easy for you guys to use. It works in all time frames, all fractals, et cetera. 
So I think there were some questions here. Let me just jump over to that, see if you guys have any questions and uh, maybe I pull up, pull up some examples here if you'd like. All right, uh, since I'm on a laptop here, you're gonna see my entire screen here. And where did that uh, go? I lost the chat. The questions uh, are, are elusive here. So loud uh, was, what is this? Good day, audio good. Thank you guys. Uh, questions, everyone, blue drop down. Okay, Perry. Uh, reasons to use simple versus exponential moving averages, preferred type. Yeah, I mean, there's it's personal preference. And vector candles, yeah, exactly, Perry. So you got me. Uh, and let's see. Okay, well, uh, exponential moving averages, simple moving averages. There's a whole video on that. I prefer exponential moving averages, especially when looking at longer term time frames. I do use log version on my charts. If that is a bit foreign to you, um, basically, if it's a short time frame, there's generally not a lot of difference between uh, between algorithmic. Sorry. Um, uh, what, what does A stands for? Auto, well, it stands for, I, I, I'm, the word escapes me, guys, but the logarithmic is what we want to pay attention to. If I change this, which I guess I could do, it, it changes it slightly on the short term, but on the longer term, it can affect how your uh, trend lines are drawn. And so in longer term time frames, I, I prefer logarithmic, okay? And, uh, and actually, so the, the button is between those. Auto also fits it to the screen. So trading view has a lot of features here. Let's not really get into that. I prefer exponential moving averages. Some people will look at a 200 day simple moving average. You can certainly be suffer from analysis paralysis if you have too many. My suggestion, pick ones that you like where you can see the patterns and um, you know it makes sense to you. And you know, I'll just talk about that because some of you might be new here. The analogy I've used for years is the analogy of you know, if you're out on the lake, you want to be on above, you want to be on thick ice, right? So, so the 21 day is kind of like thin ice. That green one is that 50 period. That's their thicker ice. So as long as you're above the ice, you can see down here we got it back above the thin ice and the thin ice and the thick ice. About rather, it pushed up, kind of have supported on that thick uh, thin ice, that orange line. And then once you get below that that 50 day, it's kind of like you're below the thick ice. You're going to come up, hit your head. It's harder to get back above. Once you get back above it, that's good. You can push up to new highs, but falling back below, generally bad. All right. And then if there's crossing over of the moving averages, you know, uh, you you can you can visually see how this is going. Uh, I'm not going to get into a teaching moving averages class, although we do have more training in our coaching program and uh, in the back office there, as well as in the crypto mastery program. You can find out more about that there. I would suggest, by the way, is to make sure you have these indicators. Uh, you can go to cryptomastery.org slash pro and watch this 30 minute video. We have a lifetime offer or a very reasonable yearly offer. Uh, you guys, you need to have these where you're competing against me and my students. These are superior signals and built by a 25-year trader and quant engineer. And uh, as I said, we had uh, that ERI, which was a huge breakthrough and accidental discovery, this ERI Pro. And when conjoined or in confluence rather with the TSI Pro, that's that's usually that trigger. I'll pull up the trade success checklist here in a minute. Uh, tell you what, many of you have seen that. Now, if you're new here and you want to see us go through and dissect a trade using the trade success checklist, let me know in the in the comments, okay? But uh, so here on the ERI Pro, we also have the Trend Pro, and uh, we just added the RSI Pro, which is which is amazing. It'll show bullish and bearish divergence. It'll show circles, green circles, red circles, green good. So if the more of these that align, the greater your chances that trade will follow through. Works on weekly charts. Works on monthly charts. I'll show you that uh, the ERI has only triggered four times in the history of Bitcoin, and each time was at a market cycle bottom. Now, we didn't invent it till two years ago, but going back, uh, it has fired every time. And yes, I did use it in live trading. Those who've been with me for a while, you guys remember January 2023, even December of 2022, when we were around 16.5, I was one of the only people I know saying it's time to get back in. And that was December. We launched M3 Active Trader, but January we had that ERI in the monthly time frame. And I said, guys, it's time to get back in. And clearly, that was the right call. These tools uh, will help you trade, help you make more money, and avoid more losses. Uh, I'll go through more of these here a bit later. But we've talked about 
the order block detector, RSI Pro a little bit. Uh, we have our own version of Bollinger Bands. Uh, Bollinger Bands are great for stocks. The standard settings though, don't work for crypto. Uh, we fixed that. We have our own settings that work phenomenally well, showing when to sell, when to buy, need to have that. Okay, you can learn more about that there. Just go to uh, our website. You can go check that out. Highly recommend having those. All right, so uh, where are we? Coming back over to this screen here. So Bitcoin pulling back a little bit. Again, this probably maybe comes down a, a little bit today or lingers up here tomorrow, pulls back, breaks higher. Uh, that would be the pattern that I suggest and let, uh, that I anticipate, unless we get like a short squeeze, which if either we do this, you know, kind of zigzag, break that uh, that level. Once we break 74K, if you want to be really cautious, just wait till we close above 75K. Sure, you might miss a little bit here, but I'd like to buy into strength. Uh, I am mostly long right now, uh, anticipating a break higher. And uh, but uh, we never know. And if you're kind of new to all this, not sure of your skills and don't have your spidey sense developed to the point that you're comfortable with it, uh, right about 74K, a close above that, you know, I'd like a little bit of a buffer. Let's say you, you wait to go all in until it's at 75K on a closing basis. Let's say it doubles. You're still doing pretty well. But this is the path I think we'll take. If we pull down a little bit, slightly different path, pull down, bounce, zigzag back up above. That's what I think is happening and on the horizon. So uh, let's take a look at some other coins here. And we're going to keep class nice and short here today. Uh, that is uh, Bitcoin. Uh, if I pull up the uh, Bitcoin on an actual exchange, you know, we can see a similar pattern. I had drawn this on Bitstamp. Push higher, break above, retest, and then resuming the uptrend. So a couple other ones, um, you know, I'm not going to look at Chainlink here. We do a deep dive in most of these coins in tomorrow's class, which is our M3 Active Trader. You can learn more about that on the website too. Highly recommend joining that. You do get the base indicators free with that. And, um, you know, these order block detectors. Now that's not part of the base uh, product, but we you get the ERI, the TSI, and the ATR, the other ones. And uh, we do a deep dive into these and I do trades. So, and you also get daily access to me in a, a signal group, which looks kind of like this here. If I move it over, lots of chatter going on and uh, people recommending coins, some smart traders in here. This is daily commentary. You can ask me questions every day in the M3 Active Trader. So make sure to check that out. And again, that is uh, listed here on our main website. So if you go back to this one, moonstream.io, uh, and you can learn more about that right here. So with something for everybody, um, I do pay attention right now. We have been patiently waiting for the next phase of this bull market for two years now, it feels like. It is it is imminent right around the corner. I'm not saying there won't be hiccups. There certainly will be uncertainty, but you can learn more about this and everything that's included with M3 Active Trader. So uh, it certainly get help if you're new with trading. Uh, and uh, if you want my help personally, you can also uh, book a time with me, as I said, and that looks like this. Watch a short video. Uh, this is my setup in my office, home office there, and then a DC. So yes, I do trade. And this is what I look at all day, every day. All right. Uh, let's see. I had a call with somebody uh, yesterday who just decided to work with me one-on-one. -on -one, and I'm um, <clears throat> looking forward to helping him as well. All right. Let's see. On Solana, let's take a quick look at Solana. Solana's had a great... I want to show you this because Solana's been great to trade with our order block indicator. I have nearly doubled my Solana in my IRA by trading these ranges and buying in the green zone where these are order blocks on the books. So these are people who have placed orders on the various exchanges. This is Coinbase saying if the price comes down to 125, I'll buy some. And so, or down below, when we had that huge sell-off here back over in this range, it was Sunday, August 4th, uh, markets were bleeding out uh, and there was, um, you know, we also saw it up here. How, what, how would you like to have had a signal to sell up at this range? Well, I'm almost positive that was we had an ERI. Yeah, look at that. <clears throat> we had a big red ERI right there called that top. So I was selling, I had sold my salon up in here. Uh, and then I bought it back down below and uh, I knew or I reasoned that we would go lower after the market's bleeding out and Monday would be an overreaction. And sure enough, so I put buy limit orders all the way through in these order blocks. 
You see, it's kind of like having, you know, the Wizard of Oz, you go and look behind the curtain. If you don't have these, you don't really know what's happening, but it shows us where are the buyers hiding, where are the sellers hiding. So uh, you can have this with that uh, the pro version of these. So down in here, I put buy limit orders at 125, 120, 115. I got filled overnight. And, and by morning, it had opened up and then a nice little rally made money on that. But point is compounding your crypto by having these signals. Uh, I don't recommend going all in and then selling it all here, then waiting. Uh, you do recommend a DCA or dollar cost average strategy. And if it goes up, take some profits, leave some in, especially with Solana, which could rocket higher quickly which is what happened back in August of 2021 when I recommend buying it at $35 and it shot up like a rocket and um, we took profits maybe a little too early. So the question is, is Solana going to run hard again or is Sui the next big mover? And we'll have to wait and see. I'm waiting on some clearer signals. What am I trying to do here? Uh, I can't remember. I lost my train of thought. Anyway, uh, you get the idea. So currently, uh, Saul having some sell pressure in here. Now, it looks like the buyers are stronger. They're overlapping. So I would certainly buy more Solana down around 125, 120. Uh, and uh, not financial advice, but um, based on our signals here, that looks good to me. What I also like here that's bullish, though, if you guys can see, we're putting in higher lows. So I, I think we chop a bit here. We're above the 2150-day EMAs. Once we get back above 160, though, we've got a nice run up to 200. I will be taking profits around 195 uh, some profits and then waiting for deeper pullbacks, you know, uh, so Saul look is a great uh, coin to trade if you have the right tools. And on Solana, though, our radar mostly red. So we're having some resistance there, getting a little overbought on our, our uh, trend strength indicator, although the signal is going green. So, you know, um, I would say uh, I would say that uh, I would wait for pullback and I'd be buying some more. I might actually sell some and just wait for a pullback, holding a fairly large position of that. So uh, not selling all of it, of course. So let's see. Let's take a look at total market cap. We do a deeper dive into this on our Wednesday class. Um, and so we were looking at a possible inverse head and shoulders, but that did not play out. And so I'm going to update this here. But, um, you know, we have a double bottom. We have some nice order blocks. The thing that worries me a bit on a total market cap, all these sellers on the aggregate, of all the all crypto coins. So a lot of sellers up in that range. So you know what? It's it's uh it's gonna take some real serious money liquidity coming and blow through that. I think that certainly that could happen. And um, you know, while this looks ominous, if we get a push up into that, we're gonna see a massive short squeeze. And so that's that's the uh the upside. And so uh anyway, but I had drawn this on the total market cap back in here. It's exactly what it did. I got it a little bit off, but for the most part, exactly what it did come up in this range. A little bit of a pullback here, probably likely for the next few days. All right, uh, Phantom Coin, one of our favorites here. I won't go through all of these, but uh, Phantom Coin looking really good. Took our eye off it for a minute. I do own some Phantom Coin, I believe I do. And uh, coming into a sell block, though, I would expect some sell pressure in there. And then, uh, but buying in a pullback, uh, we did very, very well on Phantom Coin in 2021. Recommended that. And January, it went up 18,500%, 18,000, something like that. It's over 18,000%, so 180x on Phantom Coin. Not saying it's going to do that again. However, however, what do we see here? I always like to identify a new upward trending channel. So looking good, um, you know, I think this is a good one to have some of in the bull run, as always. Phantom's great project. Not seeing a whole lot of movement here in my watch list. Uh, I did recommend Metis, by the way last week to our M3 members. And that has had a nice little push up higher here, looking good. I wouldn't necessarily go run out and get it now. But a nice bottoming pattern right around $27 and it's pushed up nicely. Probably run up here to about 46 and uh, caught some nice uh, profit on Metis. Looks better when you zoom out like that. And just so you can see that I'm not making that up. Where was this? I'm gonna go in here. And just doing this on the fly, you guys, I want you to see that uh, you could um, have benefited from that trade. Just a question of how far back was that trade on Metis here? Maybe I've already passed it. Uh, let's see. I think maybe I already passed it. Solana, I made a recommendation on that. But you can see a lot of news that we're dropping in here 
on a daily basis. Uh, I probably skimmed right past it, guys. It was just not too long ago. So, ETH. Uh, all right, stay with me. I think I passed by it, but I, I know I mentioned Metis as a uh, call, a buy order not too long ago. Here, I just posted in there. How many of you guys caught that Metis trade? And that thing is still moving. So, anyway, uh, you get the idea, you guys. Um, so, when I see trade opportunities, I will put it in the group in M3 Active Trader. Don't see a whole lot moving, just seeing some red, a little bit of profit taking. Uh, let's see, anything you guys want to look at? There's not much else I want to share other than I am going to pull up our chart of the DXY, just kind of see what's going on with that because I, I did a video on Friday. Uh, hold on a second, uh, not list. I need to do open up a different chart. Lots of buttons on this thing. And um, right here, and I'm going to pull up my dollar... DXY study because uh, the DXY has been pushing up kind of inversely related to Bitcoin. And I suggested that um, uh, we would push up and then reject. So we're probably, yeah. So on the DXY, waiting for everything to load on here, probably we'll reject and start heading lower here. We'll just wait <clears throat> until these uh, channels overlay onto it. Uh, what's going on here? I need to, I'm running a little slow on this laptop. The DXY daily chart, it's still, I think it's still loading, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think the DXY is, it's going to start heading back down again, which is when we would expect to see a Bitcoin starting to rally. Um, okay. Anyway, let me go back to our main uh, chart there. And if you guys want, let me jump over to the chat. Let's see. I don't see any questions. So, um, Bottom line, you guys, this thing is ready to get going and you need to really start thinking about, uh, well, is it time to add to positions, wait for pullbacks? Uh, that's going to be a personal preference. We, we can get a little bit deeper into it in the M3 Active Trader tomorrow. If you're into slower, uh, slower trades, our Retire Rich class is excellent. And um, you can go click on that from our website and actually see a uh, sample class. Those are longer term plays focusing on this. This is our retire rich inner circle and focusing on the future Amazon and Netflix uh, that have 10X, 20X, and even 100X potential. Um, go watch this. If you're more of a buy and hold trader, if you're in our Moonstream newsletter and you like what you see there and you want a little bit more action, I've just released a report of 40 coins uh, in there in a shopping list to really take advantage of this bull run. A couple 20X, 40X potential coins, one of my favorites, uh, some of you know, and uh, is a future Amazon, I believe, in the deep end space, and even a potential 100X. Uh, you can learn about that, go watch this. This is a sample class here, or a short video from Mike and I. You can click over and enroll, or see a highlight reel, or even see some of those winners over here. So um, anyway, you guys, uh, look, um, go go check this out. A lot of our past winners here, like Filecoin went up 260% and 280% um, render in 108 days on this Retire Rich. This is from our last year. Last year, these calls, INJ went up 568%. Uh, now, you know, keep in mind, that would be if you bought where we recommended it and sold at the target. I did give a $50 target here which it did hit and to hold a moon bag. I don't know if you can see this in highlight, always hold a moon bag, but any one of these trades could have more than paid for the service. So we're eyeing some really big ones here and go read through this. Uh, Retire Rich is a great class and uh, there's more, there are more in their winners. I just didn't have time to kind of label them in. We're here to help you guys, uh, whatever your budget is, uh, but uh, be paying attention. Now's the time to be looking at some higher gains in these coins. And uh, guys, I guess that's about all we have time for. How are we doing on time? We covered some news. Uh, I could go in and do a trade success checklist, but I kind of want to wait till next week till we have the new one. All right, and uh, seeing some new you know, movements. Uh, not a lot happening here. We So here, Bitcoin traders brace for new highs. I don't know. Um, we rallied to 68K, but we're hitting resistance. And let's see, Satoshi predicted to lose Bitcoin crown by Christmas. No idea. If you haven't seen the Bitcoin documentary, though, uh, sparked a lot of controversy. It is, it's well worth watching. And I think it's um, Bitcoin. It's uh, what is it called? The something of money. And uh, Satoshi revealed Bitcoin, something like that. It's on HBO. 
um, thought provoking. I think they got it wrong, but you never know. There's a lot of ambiguity to that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, many of us believed it doesn't matter who Satoshi is or was. And the fact is and uh, that uh, Bitcoin has become the most uh, valuable and highest performing asset in the last decade. And so having Larry Fink, by the way, some news I may have missed, you guys may have missed part of this rally too, was Larry Fink came out, the CEO of BlackRock, whereas he was a very vocal critic of Bitcoin, even last cycle, he's finally come out and said, this is a real asset class. Now that they've bought a whole bunch of it, now they're going to say, this is great. This thing you've got to have ever have. Uh, that's how BlackRock operates, of course. And uh, nothing against those guys because um, I don't want to get whacked. But uh, <laughs> no, I mean, look, they own everything. So um, I guess that's about it. I was watching Helium before. Um, Helium token, I will say this, is showing some signs of weakness. Uh, you know, we have this kind of macro uptrend. I don't like that the 21-day exponential has now crossed down below the 50. And the other clue that this could be rolling over is the, the RSI Pro. Uh, earlier today was showing bearish divergence. So let me turn this back on and move this out of the way. That's not the one I want to show you. It's probably down below. And that's not it either. That's the uh, hash ribbons indicator. Let's see. So I'm going to pull up the, must be a different layout. thought I had teed that up perfectly, but apparently haven't. Let me do that now. Pull up that chart here from my favorites. And so our RSI Pro, one of our Pro indicators. Uh, and what's going on here? I must not have favorited that one. So I got to scroll down here. This is part of our Pro Pack, you guys. This is really one of the more valuable indicators we've now come out with. And where did it go? I think my machine's running a bit slow here. Uh, I see it. It's right in here, TSI, RSI Pro. So when you buy these, by the way, they'll turn up on, when you order them, they'll, they'll show up in your invite-only scripts here, and then you just add them and favorite them. Okay, that's how you get to them. All right, so uh, with that, <clears throat> what am I talking about? Helium, maybe I was on a weekly chart, but I could have sworn it was firing a red on the RSI Pro, and I must have been thinking about the TSI. So I got that wrong. Must be something else. Okay, well, let's look at this, though. This is uh, very imp important. <clears throat> on that trend strength indicator, it is super valuable and bullish when it comes down from being oversold down here and then turning up green. Similarly, it's very bearish, rolling over, turning red and below 80. So on a weekly time frame, Helium not looking so good here. I think probably it comes back down and likely holds this trend channel. But had I been watching that, I might sell some of my helium uh, based on those red signals on the weekly and uh, sort of this, this in, in ambiguous chart here. I don't know. That's a tough one because it's in a buy block. Sometimes these signals will conflict. When in doubt, stay out. When they align, that's when you want to jump in. And we're seeing some great alignment on these. We'll talk about that more tomorrow. Uh, look at that. Sui is selling off. Markets seem to be selling off a bit. Sui uh, selling back down to retest that $2 mark. And uh, so that would be actually a buy, uh, a good buy entry point on uh, Sui. Um, so typically what happens when they break up to new all time highs, let me show you this. And that it'll, it'll come back and retest that. And, and so we want to see that hold. Sui had a big run up, but my targets on Sui are, I'll show you in a minute, in a minute. So a nice pullback if we can hold. I did sort of predict this. It would come back as the, the EMAs are rising up. I would buy Sui all the way down to $1.90. And, uh, you know, the as far as the next phase higher, um, pullbacks, it, well, we want to see it hold this because this is price discovery zone up on top. And uh, so we do talk about that more in uh, M3 Active Trader because that's one of our picks. So, you know, but good, it's breaking new highs. Kind of like, um, so just like Solana, it pushed up quickly to a $6 billion market cap, which is where it is right now. Could it go higher? Uh, it could go uh, up higher. Solana is around $15 billion. Um, I have to double check that or pushed up to $15 billion pretty quick. I think Solana is a much higher my, my market cap, around $77 billion actually. So Sui is one to watch. Um, not saying run out and buy it, but anyway. That is uh, another one that we've been keeping an eye on. I think that's about all I want to cover here today, you guys. Uh, the Let me go back to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's bullish again. It was down this morning. It's been up and down. It's all over. Kind of a manic day here in the markets. Uh, so 
What I would say it is bullish if we can close here above this trend line resistance. You can see I had a question mark there on Friday when I did an update video that went out to our M3 and private clients and retire rich. So the fact that we are pushing up higher here, if we can close above 66K, then I think it's a quick quick push up to 70K, you guys. But this is a, definitely a pullback coming in this range. So we have this range of opportunity and right in there for potential buying opportunities. So guys, with that, I'm going to let you go. And I don't see any questions. Uh, I'm just going to say, check in and see who's here. And uh, some of you, some familiar faces and uh, our M3 group. I'll just reach a recognize you guys. Uh, Mary, hey, Leslie, Dr. T, Alex. Cool, all M3 and Retire Rich members. Paul, uh, Perry, and so, and Todd. Okay. Well, success leaves clues, you guys. You guys are, most of the people here are people in the markets and you guys are doing great. So uh, if you're watching this on a replay, uh, consider joining one of our programs. This is our free class to kind of expose you to what we do. Most of you are uh, in our other programs. So I'll have more information for you guys to tomorrow. Be back in the office. Uh, you know, I, I think this is a, a smoldering campfire. It's ready to go. And uh, we'll know more soon. I know we've been saying that forever, but look at this the great trend line break out of resistance. So we're not out of the woods, but my spidey sense is we're going to push up in here and scare the you-know-what out of the shorts and see a big short squeeze. I think this thing could really push up higher quickly. And just strictly on spidey sense, I don't know that we get the pullback that everyone would wait for. Even though I taught you that, and even though that's mostly true, uh, Bitcoin, when it really goes, sometimes it just does that instead of what we normally would see, which is this. So either way, I think the wind is at our backs and we'll see some nice movement here coming into the fall. So um, I'll have more for you guys tomorrow and we'll see you on Thursday for Retire Rich, those of you in that program. And uh, that's all for today, everyone. Cheers.